Hello and welcome to Lockdown Church here at Wisha UF. We're bringing to an end our look at the book of Daniel and we're going to read uh, Daniel chapter 12, the last chapter, and we'll read uh, the whole chapter. And this is God's word. At that time, Michael, the great prince who protects your people, will arise. There will be a time of distress such as has not happened from the beginning of nations until then. But at that time, your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book, will be delivered. Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. But you, Daniel, close up and seal the words of the scroll until the time of the end. Many will go here and there to increase knowledge. Then I, Daniel, looked, and there before me stood two others, one on this bank of the river and one on the opposite bank. And one of them said to the man clothed in linen, who is above the waters of the river, How long will it be before these astonishing things are fulfilled? The man clothed in linen who was above the waters of the river lifted his right hand and his left hand toward heaven and I heard him swear by him who lives forever saying it will be for a time, times and half a time. When the power of the holy people has been finally broken all these things will be completed. I heard but I did not understand so I asked my Lord what will the outcome of all this be? He replied Go your way, Daniel, because the words are closed up and sealed until the time of the end. Many will be purified, made spotless and refined, but the wicked will continue to be wicked. None of the wicked will understand, but those who are wise will understand. From the time that the daily sacrifice is abolished and the abomination that causes desolation is set up, there will be 1,290 days. Blessed is the one who waits for and reaches the end of the 1,335 days. As for you, go your way till the end. You will rest. And then at the end of the days you will rise to receive your allotted inheritance. Amen. And thanks be to God for this portion of his word. Well, the book of Daniel is a fascinating account from the 70 years exile experience of one of scripture's godliest servants. The first six chapters deal with historical challenges to Daniel's faith and that of his friends. And as an interpreter of dreams and visions, chapters 7 to 12 deal with the sometimes bizarre visions that Daniel had, prophetic pointers to the near future and the end times. The near future prophecies concern the existing and successive kingdoms up to the times of the Roman Empire. But following on from chapter 9, which we looked at last time, uh, chapters 10 and 11 detail Daniel's final vision. And here he was given further insight into the great spiritual battle between God's people and those wanting to destroy them. It details also the struggles between the kings of the south and the kings of the north, wars years later between Egypt and Syria. The content of the last three chapters is rather complex on account of interpreting some of the statements as well as to the time periods being referred to as they are sometimes intertwined. And in order to do justice to the prophecies here, in Daniel, and in Revelation, it requires a great deal of study, far out with the scope of these short messages. Rather, let me sum things up from chapter 12. Facts and principles that we need to grasp. And the first of those is that of great suffering. We know that Jesus promised that his followers would be hated on account of believing on him. But the promise came with assurance. Jesus said, In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. That's John 16 and verse 33. And the chapter opens with this contrast facing God's people. 
Verse 1, at that time Michael, the great prince who protects your people, will arise. There will be a time of distress such as has not happened from the beginning of nations until then. But at that time your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book, will be delivered. Now it talks there about Michael, the great prince, and uh, he is the archangel. The book of Revelation, he appears to be the head over all the angels of God, and he's referred to earlier in Daniel chapter 10. And his purpose, as we see in verse 1, is to protect God's people. The reason, of course, being the time of distress, great distress, that believers will face. And as we've seen, the exile to Babylon was a, a judgment upon God's people because of their failure to believe and heed the warnings of the prophets. It was, in other words, distress that they brought upon themselves. But the message of these future prophecies is suffering and distress on account of being faithful to God, something that Daniel knew only too well. And when we read church history from the New Testament times onwards, this fact has been proved time and time again. Countless Christians have suffered and died, sometimes in the most horrendous ways, simply because they followed Jesus Christ. According to the Open Doors organisation, over 260 million Christians are living under persecution in 50 countries at this point in time. Now we may have our moments of frustration or anger over lockdown restrictions, but that will lessen once a vaccine is readily available. But for the 260 million suffering for Christ, that is their life. And the way things are going here, persecution for being a Christian will intensify. From verse 5 onwards, we see details of great suffering of God's people, including the variously interpreted phrase in verse 7, it will be for a time, times and half a time. But the assurance for the believer is that persecution brings purification. Verse 10, many will be purified, made spotless and refined, but the wicked will continue to be wicked. None of the wicked will understand, but those who are wise will understand. As James says in his epistle, in, verses, in the first chapter, verses 2 to verse 4, Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. The second thing to draw out from uh, Daniel 12 is that of God's plan. And we can only imagine how difficult it was for Daniel in receiving all these visions. We are told that at times he was deeply troubled and at times even ill on account of them. But the one thing that comes through time and time again is that God is in control and he is working out his purposes. Firstly, there is the assurance for all God's people. The second half of verse 1. But at that time, your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book, will be delivered. And verse 3. Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. But whatever hardships, sufferings or persecutions we may have to face as believers, all those whose names are written in the book of life will be saved for eternity. Furthermore, those who have led many to righteousness will shine like the brightness of the heavens and like the stars forever and ever, as it says here. What that in reality will mean, well, we'll have to wait and see. You know, many people try to be stars in the entertainment business, but how often do we see the emptiness they experience as many of them turn to drugs or drink or find their stardom suddenly collapse? Eternal stardom is only for those who are wise, those who fear God, which is the beginning of 
wisdom. And far better that than the fate of those who spurn God and his way. Look at verse 2. Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. The eternal fate of those who choose not to follow God is a hard pill for us to swallow, especially as we will think of people we know. But God has a purpose for humanity, his creation, that we simply believe and follow in his ways and accept his son Jesus Christ as our saviour. In the first place, this should spur us on as Christ's witnesses, making sure that we are faithful and consistent as believers in all circumstances. And secondly, as God gave plenty warnings to Israel in the past through the prophets, so his warnings continue to this day through his word. And it's therefore vital that the Bible is not suppressed, but let loose, not simply with preaching, but more importantly as lived out truth by Christians. The further part of God's plan is revealed in verse 4 and verse 9. Verse 4, but you, Daniel, close up and seal the words of the scroll until the end of the time. Many will go here and there to increase knowledge. And verse 9, he replied, go your way, Daniel, because the words are closed up and sealed until the time of the end. You see, the thing is that God does not want us to know when the end will come. He wants us to know it's coming, but not when. Yes, he gives us signs through disasters and great suffering, but the day and the hour is known only to him. There's a great verse in Deuteronomy 29 and 29, which says, The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the things revealed belong to us and to our children forever, that we may follow all the words of the law. What matters, in other words, is that we believe and follow the truth that is clearly revealed to us. What is unclear or unknown, we leave in God's hand and simply keep trusting him. The third point to draw out is that of God's promise. The Bible is God's word of ultimate promise, that of salvation. From the fall in the Garden of Eden onwards, God promised a saviour, a messiah. And the fact that God was able to say with assurance to Daniel about the promise for his people was because of his salvation plan, that the promised Messiah would come and his kingdom. However, two essential things had to be dealt with that only God has power over, and that is sin and death. And the proof of the victory of this was in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, bringing assurance of the believer's resurrection. Now, the Israelites in the Old Testament believed in a resurrection and a new kingdom, but teaching about it was not common. And here in Daniel 12, we have reference to a bodily resurrection, and not only of believers, but of people. Verse 2 again, Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, others to shame, and everlasting contempt. And it was a reference to a resurrection for judgment first. And to cement the truth to Daniel, he is given great assurance in verse 13. As for you, go your way till the end, you will rest, and then at the end of the days you will rise to receive your allotted inheritance. What a wonderful promise in view of the 70 years of exile that Daniel had. Now we may see lockdown as some kind of exile which will end at some point. And surely it has been a test of our faith, testing our belief in the sovereign God and hopefully refining us. But post-lockdown, post-lockdown times for us may be even harder. Who knows what 2021 will bring? Will the anti-Christian elements grow stronger and increase persecution. What matters is that we remain committed to Jesus Christ. Now I realise that there is much more in the latter part of Daniel that I have not explored simply because of the depth of understanding and teaching it would require. 
There are many commentaries and books on the subject of prophecy and its interpretation which folks can consult at their leisure. But of greater importance is that of knowing and believing the parts of Scripture that are clearly understood. For our task as Christians is to live those truths, those truths as Christ's light to the world that others might believe and have the assurance of eternal life. Well, keep well, keep safe, and keep the faith. Let us pray. Eternal and sovereign God, we're simply awestruck at the knowledge you have revealed of yourself and purposes for humanity. Often we get so caught up in our little lives that we fail to stop and take time to know that you are God Almighty. Forgive us for all the time we have wasted and the times we have ignored you and done our own thing. Thank you for the teaching of Daniel that we have considered over the past weeks of lockdown and thank you for the lessons you have taught and reminded us of. Help us to ensure that we keep and grow in the faith you have given us in the days ahead. Thank you that in the past week, encouraging news has come about the availability of vaccines. This is something we have been praying about, and we thank you that there is light at the end of the pandemic tunnel. Nevertheless, infections, hospital admissions and deaths are still very much happening, and so we continue to pray for all those helping in any way to treat, heal or comfort those who have fallen to the virus. We remember all people who have health conditions or who are in the latter stages of life. We ask for mercy, grace and comfort to all. Thank you, Father, for all the many people who are not generally recognised at times like this. People who work away, often behind the scenes. Be a blessing to them. We remember other countries and their struggles with the virus along with all sorts of na other national issues. We remember the United States following the election and pray that peaceful stability will ensue. Similarly, we pray for stability and agreement in our own nation as Brexit issues continue. We pray for all those living under or being persecuted for their faith. Any struggles we might have in this regard are minuscule compared to what many others have to endure. Thank you for Jesus Christ and the salvation he secured. Keep us faithful to him in our daily walk. In his glorious name we pray.